Good afternoon and welcome to BBC News. The Housing Secretary, Robert Jenrick, has announced an extra £3.5 billion for the removal of flammable cladding from buildings in England. It'll apply to properties over 18 metres. A levy will be imposed on builders developing certain new high-rise blocks. The government set up a £1.6 billion fund last year in response to the Grenfell Tower fire in 2017, but it's been under pressure to increase that amount. Thousands of flat owners are facing huge bills for safety improvements and in many cases people are unable to sell their homes. Mr Jenrick has been speaking in the Commons. We will make further funding available to pay for the removal and replacement of unsafe cladding for all leaseholders in high-rise residential buildings of 18 metres and above or above six storeys in England. We continue to take a safety-led approach, and this funding will focus on the higher-rise buildings where the independent expert advisory panel tells us, time and again, the overwhelming majority of the safety risk lies, in line with the existing Building Safety Fund and the anticipated scope of the new Building Safety Regulator that we're establishing and will shortly be legislating for. This will ensure that we end the cladding scandal in a way that is fair and generous to leaseholders. Secondly, for lower and medium rise blocks of flats, the risks are significantly lower and the remediation of cladding is less likely to be needed. In many cases, it will not be needed at all. But where it is, costs can still be significant for leaseholders, which is why I'm announcing today that the government will develop a long-term scheme to protect leaseholders in this situation with financial support for cladding remediation on buildings between four and six storeys. Under a long-term low interest scheme, no leaseholder will ever pay more than £50 a month towards the removal of unsafe cladding, many far less. We can speak now to our political da correspondent, Damien Grammaticus, who's at Westminster for us. Um, Damien, the government had been under a lot of pressure to act further on this. What sort of reaction has there been? Well, a sort of mixed reaction uh, and quite a critical reaction from the opposition, but also uh, from a few uh, Conservatives too. I mean, the, the government, yes, under pressure because we're now, what, more than three years since the Grenfell uh, Tower tragedy. Uh, there are many, many buildings uh, that uh, have not, where the issue has not been addressed. Hundreds of, or, well, thousands of people affected by this, their lives uh, deeply affected. Uh, and what Labour ha has been saying, Labour's deputy leader, uh, Angela Rayner, uh, has been uh, tweeting saying that uh, this is not an, a solution that addresses some of the issues because, she says, uh, that leaseholders should not and must not pay for the cladding crisis that was caused by dodgy developers, cowboy builders and manufacturers of flammable cladding. That's one of the issues, is that uh, this question that it will be these taller buildings, high-rise buildings, uh, where the costs are covered, but not those sort of four to six storeys high. Uh, and that's why the Labour shadow housing secretary, Tangan Debonair, said in the Commons in response to that statement uh, that this was piling financial misery on some owners and was an injustice. Buying your first home should be a dream come true. But for many, it's now been a nightmare for years. As a result of government choices, three and a half years on from the Grenfell tragedy in which 72 people lost their lives, hundreds of thousands of people are still trapped in unsafe homes, many more unable to move. And today's announcement is too late for too many. It's a repeat of undelivered promises and backtracks on the key one that leaseholders should have no costs to pay. The Chancellor said last March, all unsafe combustible cladding will be removed from every private and social residential building above 18 metres high. But that has not happened. Buildings haven't been able to access the fund and £9 out of £10 is still sitting where it was. At every stage, the government underestimated the problem and delays caused it to grow. They still don't know how many buildings are unsafe, where they are or what danger they pose. And until we have answers to those basic questions, government will continue to make mistakes. 
So what the Labour Party wants is a, an independent body to prioritise, to look at this and prioritise which are the most uh, at-risk buildings, which should be done first. Uh, it doesn't want those who uh, are un, who have the lower-rise buildings to have to pay costs, could be £50 a month into the future. A couple of the other issues here that have been raised in reaction to this is that, you know, whether the government should be pursuing those responsible for the cladding in the first place and the buildings in the first place, they have said they're building, bringing in a tax on developers, which should bring in about £2 billion to help pay for this. But some Conservative MPs are uh, not happy. We've had uh, Stephen McPartland, who tweeted that uh, he listened to this announcement, he said, with his head in his hands, wondering how the government could have got this so wrong. Uh, it's a betrayal of millions of leaseholders, he said. And what he pointed to was a couple of issues. One issue uh, with ongoing insurance costs uh, for those living in these buildings, which are high and uh, unaffordable for many. Uh, also, uh, the how they people are dealing with the current fire safety defects, things like having to pay for waking watches, for people to patrol the buildings 24 hours a day uh, to ensure that there are no fires. Uh, and that those are ongoing costs that people are bearing. OK, Damien, many thanks. Our correspondent Damien Grammaticus there. Well, today's announcement won't affect people living in low-rise properties, like our next guest, Paul Afshar. He's part of the homeowners of LQ campaign group, and that's made up of leaseholders and shared owners affected by properties with unsafe cladding. Good afternoon to you, Paul. Um, tell us a little bit more about the building uh, that you're in, where you have your flat, and the sort of costs that you're now having to bear. Well, the building that I'm in is one of those buildings that won't unfortunately be affected by today's announcement in the sense that it's um, four storeys high. It doesn't meet the government's criteria, the seemingly arbitrary criteria of 18 metres. Um, and it's one where, for me, uh, I'm now going to be forced to take out a loan, as your political correspondent said, a loan um, uh, for much longer than my mortgage term um, in order to pay for cladding uh, dangerous cladding that I uh, didn't ask for and certainly um, shouldn't have to pay for to remove. Um, the challenge is that the, the Prime Minister last week stood up at the dispatch box and promised us that leaseholders would not have to and should not have to pay for the cost of removing dangerous cladding. And today's announcement feels like a betrayal for hundreds of thousands and millions of homeowners like myself up and down the country. There is a separate scheme, I think, being proposed for people in smaller buildings like yourself? It's a uh, long-term loan mechanism that's being proposed. The challenge with that is twofold. One, I don't know how long I'm going to have to pay off this loan for. It could be longer than 30 years, which, as I said, is longer than my mortgage. The second is I don't know whether that loan is going to saddle me for uh, the rest of my life until I pay it off, whether it follows me into um, different properties or whether it stays at the property. Today's announcement has done absolutely nothing to help out homeowners like myself who are having sleepless nights worrying about um, the, the state of the cladding on our building and, of course, worrying about paying for its removal um, when we didn't cause it in the first place. If you were able to, would you like to sell the property and move? I have actually tried to sell the property um, twice in the last 12 months and move. Mortgage lenders, um, in fact, most mortgage lenders in the UK will not lend on a, uh, on a property like mine or lend to someone who is looking to buy it. So uh, I'm stuck uh, for the time being in, in this flat, unable to sell it um, with an asset worth um, potentially nothing uh, and certainly not helped by today's government announcement. We had such high hopes from Robert Jenrick, the housing minister today, and I have to say um, the nightmare continues for many of us. Mm -hmm. And the costs that you're going to have to bear, bear, are they uniquely for removing the cladding or are there other costs as well? Because we heard from our correspondent, you know, insurance costs have gone up. There are fire safety defects that people are looking at. I don't know if you have waking watchers in your building, perhaps not because it's a low rise, but, but tell me. 
the costs are actually astronomical. And as you say, Rita, it's not just the cost of removing the cladding, which of course uh, is a huge cost in and of itself, sometimes 30, 40, 50,000 pounds per flat. The costs are also around um, waking watch fire patrols. Um, these costs are crippling. You have um, one of our uh, members, Hayley Tillerson in Leeds, who had to declare bankruptcy because because uh, of the crippling costs of uh, hundreds of pounds a month on top of her mortgage uh, to pay for a man to walk around her building to tell her that it wasn't on fire. In addition to the um, astronomical rises in insurance premiums, sometimes 10 times what people were paying before, and service charges as well. It's not just the long-term cost that we're talking about, it's the immediate cost being borne by hundreds of thousands of um, homeowners up and down the country uh, and a cost that, to be quite frank, many of us can't afford at all. Mm. And, and we've spoken to Hazel, who you referred to there, uh, here on the BBC. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. That's Paul Afshar there. Thank you.